Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. This is QAH here, bringing you another reaction video of the 2.6 Archon Quest. As I said previously, What the? It's a city? A whole city that's floating in the air? Upside down? Just look at this place. Doesn't it remind you of something? Wait, what was it again? Yes, that's it! It's just like that. Just a strange... Just as upside down, and just as spooky. In which case, maybe whatever's going on in the chasm really is connected to the Abyss Order. Oh, we gotta get to the bottom of this. Uh, oh? Hmm. The feeling is mutual. I certainly hadn't expected to meet you here either. Dane. Wait, but how did you suddenly end up here in the chasm? The chasm? So we're in the depths of the chasm, are we? Interesting. This is one place where I have never set foot before. I understand. You know what's interesting about these Archon quests is how from chapter 1 through F1 through 4, they all connected to each other. In some way, like we was watching the series, like previously, previously on the next, like on the next Archon Quest, or at three or something like that. But now, as we're moving into Chapter Two, maybe on the verge of Chapter Three ish, into the Archon Quest, now it's like individual type of stories. That's kind of weird, but I like, with me personally, I like it when it was the acts connected together in some way. Now, it's kind of more introducing five-star characters, like Raiden Shogun. Um, I don't know if he's going to be a playable character, but Shen He and Yujin, and, uh, well, Yujin is a four-star, of course, but... Eugen also played into Shin He's play, played into Shin He's quest in a way. So I like it, but in a way I also think it's better to just connect the acts because I mean I it was a little bit more juicy when it did the connecting of each act together. In my opinion. I understand how you must feel. Last time we met suddenly and parted hastily. Now our paths cross again. Fate, it seems, owes you an explanation. That much should be self-explanatory. I came upon the trail of another Abyss Herald recently and began pursuing it. Unfortunately, I got as far as cornering him before he resorted to the same trick that they all do. I was hot on his heels when I followed him through the portal, but, as usual, it was to no avail. It took me to the wrong place. Correct. Based on my recent experiences, I can only conclude that the Abyss's portals are not simply pathways from point A to point B, but gateways to an entire network. Where they emerge on the other side is their choice. It can be anywhere within the network. Sounds kinda similar to how teleport waypoints work. In short, though I was right behind your twin last time when I entered that portal, the next moment that I realized where I was, I was all alone. Back in the ruins known as Storm Terror's Lair. Oh yeah! About that! Whatever happened to the Eye of the First Field Tiller? It's in a safe place. You can be sure that I will learn the truth of the Loom of Fate operation. Sooner than it could ever fall into the Abyss Order's hands. Huh. So that title stuck in your memory. I by no means went out of my way to conceal it from you. 
that's weird. How did that title stick to her and not him saying your twin? It once stood for the glory of Kanria, but now it is but a cruel joke. My curse to bear. Twilight Sword was my title as Captain of the Royal Guards when I witnessed the destruction of my entire homeland firsthand. I believe my reluctance to raise it in conversation is quite justified. Sounds like your brother was right. We were travel partners. Sound like her brother was right about what? All he said was your twin was right behind him. Him, as in him. When did she quote her brother? We both partook in a painful journey of searching for our fate. But regrettably, we did not make it to the journey's end together. Before you continue questioning me, I ought to warn you. If my suspicions regarding the portal network are correct, then the fact that there is a portal leading here tells us that the Abyss Order has their eyes on this location. You mean, the Abyss Order is plotting something here? Actually, Paimon and the Traveler suspected that too! I mean that it's highly likely that even as we speak, the Abyss Order is watching our every move. <sighs> Don't say that! You're giving Paimon goosebumps! <laughs> A wise choice. Hmm. There appears to be light from a fire coming from near that rocky wall. Let's take a look. Hmm. There are signs of hilly churl activity here. Could these be the hilly churls the requester was talking about? Requester? In fact, hold on. You still haven't told me what you're doing here. I doubt that most travelers would have any. Um. Sir, you still haven't told us how you got down here. And why are you down here? We down here the same reason you down here, though. Because you really want to put two and two together. Any reason to venture down this way? We took a commission from the Adventurers Guild to investigate the chasm. Apparently, a whole load of hilly churls have been gathering here, and the requester wants to know why. And now it looks like we finally found our first clue. Do you want the answer? Huh? You mean, you know something about this? As it happens, I do. It's understandable that you did not perceive anything unusual. What makes this place so strange is that the environment here weakens the effect of the curse. Curse? Oh, Paima remembers. Last time you guys were saying that Conria's people were cursed to immortality or something. For centuries, I have suffered daily from the curse that was laid upon me. But here, I suddenly feel a small amount of relief from this suffering. And right here, right now, I can feel my body sending a strong message to me. It is telling me, stay. So, this place weakens the curse? That's pretty incredible. But how? That I shall need to investigate. But to the best of my knowledge, the Abyss Order does not have the technology to achieve this. Indeed. Do you know why hilly churls wear masks? It's to hide their appearance, lest they catch sight of their reflection in a body of water. Compared to how they remember themselves, it is a terrible sight to behold. One that causes them great despair. The curse of immortality denies death to those afflicted with it. And yet, it does not truly mean that they will never die. So, you mean, there's a way to undo it? <sighs> No. I mean that the body and soul will continue to be eroded until they are virtually non-existent. 
even if death is not the form that this erosion takes. When the Hillichurls realize that the end is nigh for them, it seems their instinct is to seek out a calm and dark corner of the world in which to finally say goodbye to the centuries of suffering they have endured. And of all the places they could lay down to rest, one that can ease the effects of their curse would surely be their first choice. Wow. That's so... Conversation's over. Brace yourselves. What is it? We're under attack. Even though you're probably going to see this before I drop my Hancon Star Real reaction, but there was a point I made in there about the fighting setups and how they cleverly in dialogue set up fighting scenes and this was one of them. Oh I impressed the wrong button how do y'all hopefully y'all wasn't clipping. <laughs> okay I'm going to skip over the fighting part and jump directly back into the action. Good team comps, though. And why did they attack us all of a sudden? Black Serpent Knights. They once belonged to the Royal Guard of Kanria. Wait a second. Royal Guard? So, they used to be your troops? Yes, they were. But now, the curse engulfs them, and they fight with none of the honor they once had. Because they've become pawns of the Abyss now? Let's continue on. Wait! Dame! Uh -oh. Seems we missed one. Wait, stand down. There's something different about this one. It's disappeared. What the heck? What was going on with that one? Was it- That one was looking for Dan over here. You ain't care about the traveler or no? I'm looking for Dan. But you're gonna find out why later on. You're trying to say something? How is this possible? How could he have retained self-awareness for 500 years without it? But more importantly, why did he seem so familiar? That would be a miraculous outcome indeed for a cataclysm that brought total doom and destruction. Hmm. Or perhaps it was just a coincidence. We should press onward to the city. Looks like there's a strange energy surrounding the city. We can't go any further. Guess there should be a mechanism or something around here, right? Traveler, looks like it's time to get into ruin exploring mode! Don't waste your time. Huh? Conria's technology, abyssal power. Two things I couldn't be more familiar with. <laughs> They're just cheap tricks to me. Okay. So the Abyss Order really is trying to hide something here, right? Hmm. Dan seems like he really understands what's going on here. No wonder the Abyss Order doesn't want him around. Not necessarily. The closer we draw, the more I am inclined to conclude that these ruins belong to a more ancient civilization still. The Abyss Order simply got to them before anyone else. Even older than Kanria? Whoa. Pyron can't even imagine back that far. That said, the architecture here does somewhat resemble that of Kanria. At least, it would if it were the other way up. Let's head toward the light over there. Mind your footing on the way ahead. It's a long way down. <laughs> Is this where they're based? Or wait, are they guarding something? 
We are likely drawing near to whatever the Abyss Order is trying to hide. Let's take them out first. Hold on, I think they... If you look carefully, for a minute I thought there was been a, a retreat. Oh uh, yeah, by the way, I'm skipping the... I'm skipping the battle scenes. It will not in focusing more on the cutscenes. Huh? What's this? So, the Black Serpent Knights have nothing to do with the Abyss Order's secret. Huh. I should have guessed. So, what exactly is going on with these hilly churros? As I said, for these hilly churros, the end is nigh. They have grown old and fearful of the light, even become one with the darkness. And yet the curse continues to corrode them. But why would the Black Serpent Knights want to stay here and guard them? I didn't realize my mic was on the entire time. But, um, how does he know the Healy Chimps have grown old if they are wearing a mask? Maybe he's seen the Healy Trims without mask, but to, to me, they look like young little Healy Trims that just has been captured by a whole bunch of demons. Ah, more of them are closing in! It's him! The guy that came out of nowhere and disappeared again! Dan? Whoa, whoa, what? You recognize him? Could it be? If it's as I suspect, then this is a truly tragic state of affairs. Dane? You want to know why they were gathered here guarding the Hilly Churls, don't you? It's because as far as the Black Serpent Knights are concerned, they're simply doing their duty. I didn't realize here how hard he changed the subject when he sat when we sat there and asked, "Hey, do you know him?" and he said, "Half dead." And then he all of a sudden says, "Oh, you want to know how the hilly trims are like this, huh?" and walks away. When I first watched this, I didn't realize how hard he changed the subject. The one who ordered them to retreat just now. I suddenly recognized him. I knew him as a young man, an elite in the Royal Guard of old. His name is Halfdan. So, he's from 500 years ago too? And you already said that. Like, I... Uh, I don't know, to me, maybe he's just clarifying to them. I mean, maybe in a way he's clarifying it to them, but in, to me, I feel like we're going in circles now. To this day, I still remember the final orders. I, the Twilight Sword, gave to Halfdan on the day of disaster in Kanria. Before I made haste back to the... Yeah, he's going in circles now, so we're, we're just going to skip ahead. In whatever remains of their minds, they are still protecting the people of Kanria. If you see these ruins as Kanria in the throes of disaster, and these hilly churls 
as the people crying for help. Then suddenly, I can make sense of what I'm hearing. Their growls are less of a threat and more of a warning. Then what are they saying? Though it is barely discernible, I can just about make it out. They keep repeating a word from the old language of Kanria. Run. Even I have to admit, the fact their will is strong enough to survive 500 years of erosion. It is nothing short of a miracle, born from hopelessness. Oh, so Paimon had them all wrong. It doesn't matter. Even I took them for enemies for a moment. Let's keep heading toward the light at the top. I believe the Black Serpent Knights will no longer try to stop us. So was he trying to make a point here that the Helichims or the ones that are captured by demons are not the necessary enemies? Or was he trying to say Helichims in general are not the enemies? And they're just made out to be the enemies because they are trained. Basically, they are trained to hurt the travelers, even though they come off harmless. If that makes sense, or did I misinterpret that? Yeah, I'm skipping the walkthrough part because I'm sure it, I, I'm sure everybody by now has beat this Archon quest, so. Time to go. <laughs> must be part of the entire city structure, a relic of this ancient civilization. And more importantly, it is the very thing that is weakening the curse. Here, my whole body feels more at peace than it has in a long time. I'm not gonna hold you. If I was in a place like this, my body would be full of anxiety. Because it just takes that one moment, that one pebble, that one hint of gravity for all of that water to drip down. The effect is stronger here than it was before. And I think it's because that water pool has something akin to a cleansing effect. Cleansing? So that means the water in that pool can wash away the curse for good? No, that would be impossible. I have lived with this curse for 500 years, and I have been fully conscious the entire time. Suffice to say, no one understands the curse like I do. It is a way of branding us at the level of the fate of the world itself. When a god applies a curse, it takes effect at a higher level of reality than the person themselves. Even now, I can feel the curse slowly permeating my entire being, becoming part of me, slowly but surely replacing me. Perhaps it may be possible to suppress the corrosive effect of the curse for a time, but cleansing it entirely, consider it tantamount to burning away an integral part of your body. It is not a process that one could ever hope to survive. 
Whoa. An irreversible curse. Blyman can't even imagine. In any case, I can feel that the water's cleansing effect is not nearly potent enough. At most, it might suppress the curse, but a little. Hmm. So, what's that contraption there? It looks kind of out of place. Frankly, I have never seen a device of this design before either. It is not unreasonable to suspect that it could belong to the Abyss Order. But what could they be planning to do here? I love how he just comes in the scenery, he doesn't say, doesn't say much, he just looks and observe of what, of what everyone's doing, like, he's making sure y'all ain't causing no stirs, no trouble, and it's funny how y'all see him, and y'all just have a little staring, <laughs> staring, like, like a stare off, like, I wish it was more of a, like, I wish it was more of an interaction here, like, besides him calling his goons in order to fight, and then retreating, like, I wish we didn't wait to the very, very end in order to understand dance and have dance interaction with each other. I wish, like, we would understand this tension, this moment between Dan and Half Dan. Half Dan, do you have something to say to me? My mic cut off. Even right then and there, like, it could have been some sort of interaction, maybe like an emotion there, like, instead of him just walking away, like, what what is he truly thinking about? Like, we see at the moment of the amount of times I said like, but what is he really thinking about? Does he hate him? Does he like him? He not messing with him? It's just like, we wait until the very end. And plus, it's no climax here, so it's just... Kind of weird. He ran off! But he didn't disappear like last time. He's indicating that we should follow him. Are you coming? True. And how did you indicate he wants y'all to follow him? How do you know he's not setting you up? So, uh, we going then? <laughs> So far, now like digesting everything, second time around, I don't want to say like this is my least favorite quest, but it's not the most entertaining. It gets more inter it gets more entertaining at the very end. Perhaps whatever lies ahead is what he wants us to see. Let's keep going. Let's go see. Oh, these hilly trails look like they're in pretty bad shape, too. Some of them look like they've already taken their final breath. Is this what Haftan wanted to show us? Whether it is or not, everything here is worth investigating in detail. Inspect the area. Leave no stone unturned. These hilly trails have no life left in them at all. Before long, they'll become one with the darkness. The hilly trails we meet in the wild are always so rowdy. Paimon never would have imagined that this is how they spend their final days. We may not have a whole lot of happy memories dealing with hilly trails, but still, Paimon hopes they're at peace in their last moments. For food and 
in crates like these, right? But they seem pretty much empty. Is it because they're so near to the end that they don't need to eat anymore? Hmm. Even if they don't need to eat anymore, Paimon bets they still miss food for the flavor. Fire here. Like what hilly churros built in the wild. Wait, but wasn't Dane saying that hilly churros get scared of the light when they reach the very end of their lives? Hmm. Maybe in the very, very end, they still want to feel some light and warmth. Oh. Uh, just thinking aloud here uh, could also be another reason. I mean, if I was near close to death, I would want to feel some type of warmth. How did that flower get this far underground? Did someone bring it in memory of the deceased hilly churros? Hey, now that you mention it, Paimon thinks it looks kind of familiar too. It is the national flower of Kanria, the Intivat. It once bloomed all over the nation. It would only last two weeks before wilting. But if you were to pluck one and take it out of Kanria, the petals would stop growing and turn hard. Only when it finally returned to its home soil would the petals grow soft once more and finally turn to dust. So the Intivat is a symbol for a wanderer far from home, signifying the tenderness of the homeland. <gasps> so for this flower to get here, it must have been brought from... Your Highness. I wonder from like, looking at 2.7, our conquest and this, is this our brother giving her hints and signs? Telling her that I'm okay? Or you're close to finding me? Maybe? I don't know. So the proposal finally has your blessing. In focusing single-mindedly on confronting the heavenly principles, we neglected our original mission. The revival of the homeland. I should not have been so indecisive. The device is almost ready. We await your command. What are the chances of- His voice sounds so nasty. Succeeding. Theoretically speaking, approximately. Forget it. Even a 1% chance is enough. For too long have we dwelt in the Abyss. Surely they would rather return to the natural cycle of life and death as soon as possible than continue to exist as they are, without a shred of dignity. They cannot be made to continue paying the price for those so-called sins. The Order is most fortunate to be graced with your decision. Ether! You saw something, didn't you? Can you tell me what it was? Yeah, you zoned out for quite a while there. <laughs> well, people do say that twins have a special connection. It sounds as if they are attempting to make use of certain equipment to cleanse the curse. It could well be the device we saw earlier. And you say he mentioned the revival of the homeland, correct? No surprise there. Stubborn as ever. It appears as if the Abyss Order plans to use this location to cleanse the hilly churls of their curse and restore them to the way they once were. Then, they will serve as the foundation for reviving the nation of Kanria. After all, there can be no nation without a people. 
<laughs> it is the height of foolishness. They have no chance of success, not even a 1% chance. I told you already that no one knows this curse better than I, having lived with it for 500 years. There is no redemption. There is no undoing the curse. Trying to remove it by force will achieve nothing but to inflict further suffering. So make sure you are clear in your mind. You have to tell yourself, they are no longer human. If you cling to false hope and allow yourself to become too emotionally invested, the only way is down. You will end up just like them, mired in hypocrisy. Save your strength for something worth saving. Oh? <laughs> but of course, I am merely someone you hired for a task, while he is your brother. It is only natural for you to side with him. But whatever decision you make cannot deter me from mine. My chosen path is to stop the abyss. If we have reached an impasse, then perhaps this is where we should say... I see. It seems that the three questions I put to you on our first meeting were worthwhile. You have developed your own individual views on this world. Very well. Since you have volunteered your true thoughts on this matter, I shall not hide mine from you. Right now, I have a more immediate agenda than stopping the Abyss. That is to say, the Abyss's actions here directly dishonor the final wishes of Halfdan and my other compatriots. I cannot allow this to proceed. The Abyss may appear at any moment. Be on your guard at all times as we proceed. We can see the Upside Down City from here, too! Wait, watch out! Yeah, I forgot to queue up the Stranger Things soundtrack. Nah, that's just Will Smith from, uh, Men in Black. Look! It's too bright! The mutation is continuing. Has the Abyss made its move already? Jane Smith, I see your incessant meddling continues, and that you have once again joined forces with our Highness's kin. Regrettably, I was not in time to control your exit from the network, and it sent you here of all places. Huh? This was a catastrophic error. Hmm. I am surprised that you dare to face me. You ran like a coward last time. Our Highness's will must be done. All interferences must be removed, whatever the price to pay. This time, the curse that torments our people must be undone, once and for all. You are the only ones who torment them. There is nothing else left of those hilly churls. Nothing besides the curse itself. Say what you wish. I am going nowhere, Dameslip. Then you will give your life just to delay the inevitable. How absurd. But since you wish to persist, then so be it! You really think you can use that device beneath the pool to cleanse this curse? This plan is even For ages! Now you finally got him! There's no time to celebrate. The Abyss Order's device is activating, but there's still time to destroy it. Alright, let's go! Look, the amplification device. Am I too late? 
They're in agony. This is no way for them to meet their end. Find a way to stop that thing. It was sirens going around my area, so I was about to say, have Dan knows ether as well? I thought he would have been turned to ashes in an instant. Half Dan's soul is extraordinarily resilient. Meddling fool! Encumber us no more! Don't you have a greater encumbrance to worry about? Come on! This is your grand opportunity to get rid of me. Take him out and deactivate the device. As long as the device is active, the cursed are rendered powerless. Only you can take on the Abyss. If you value his sacrifice, then do not waste any more time here. See all these rays of light and portals? They must have installed several of these energy devices in various locations. Find them, quickly! So, we have to go through these Abyss portals? Mind that! Half Dan and the others are enduring far greater suffering than I! There's no time to lose! sensation has indeed stopped. So, we managed to stop the Abyss Order's plan? <sighs> Let me check. Dane must be really upset. Of all the ways to be reunited with one of his former comrades after so long, this is rough. <sighs> Let's go. Huh? Uh... Huh? Light? Huh? <gasps> <clears throat> <clears throat> huh? Apologies, Captain Dainsliff, Twilight Sword. Back then, I failed you and failed to protect our people. <clears throat> no. For 500 years, you have faithfully done your duty. To this day, I am proud of you all. <sighs> I was going to say, um, since this main focus is about Dan, they could have had a Dan cutscene like they did for Zhao to explain his history with Half Dan. I felt like I've been out cheated and I still don't understand the relations to have Dan and Dan. Kanria, didn't 
fall, did it? Since you're still here. Correct. Hope I hope my mic was on. I was just saying, oh, there's no relations to to me as the viewer. It does not explain what Dan and Half Dan's relations to each other. Yeah, the ending gave us a glimpse, but it could have been more detailed. Because I'm still confused on their relationship. Besides him being a trooper? Uh, or... So... No need to revive the homeland. More than one kind of strange power exists here. Souls are no strange sight under the circumstances. Still, if you intend to venture deeper in and continue your investigation, you ought to be careful. <coughs> you bet! We'll be super careful! Oh, but dang! Does this mean you're not coming with us? That device took a severe toll on me. It will take me some time to recover. Oh, right. Well, actually, Baimon already knew that. You've clearly been pushing through the pain this whole time. You've earned a good rest, Dane. Oh, you should take a vacation! Vacation? <laughs> the very notion. This word has no business being in my vocabulary. There are more important things that demand my attention. The Loom of Fate operation is still underway. And I suspect that these amplification devices are connected to that plan. Thank you for understanding. I only hope that next time we meet, you know whose side you're on. Sheesh! He sure knows how to hold a grudge. Saving that snide remark right until the end. Well... Shame that we didn't get to see your brother again, but- You know whose size you own. You barely told her about her brother. She had to find out through a flower what her brother was really doing. You need to learn what size you own. You need to elaborate what side you on. You- you on- Are you trying to be a hero or you on half Dan side? Info, huh? As long as you keep pressing on with your journey, you guys will definitely meet again, and everything will be back to normal, right? Oh, Paimon almost forgot. The real reason we came here was to investigate what was going on with the hill trolls, wasn't it? We've probably seen enough to report back to the miner now, but uh, how are we going to explain it to him? This is all way too complicated for regular people to understand. Uh, eh, we'll figure it out. Just don't forget about the commission when we're done here. And that's the end of that.